Good morning, everyone. Uh, Brent Wessler here with Automation in Action podcast. Today's guest is our senior solutions uh, sales engineer, Jim Greco from Epicor, which I, I guess I'm going to say Epicor slash Dockstar. Uh, and uh, thanks for attending today, Jim, and welcome. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me in. Yeah, wonderful. So, you know, obviously, as someone that's, uh, I don't know, how long you've been there? Tw 20 years, is it? 21, 22. Ooh, it's been quite yeah. a while. Long time. So certainly someone that's in the industry a long time. Also someone that's in a pre-sales uh, facing solution designing type of role where you do custom demos and you're talking to customers on a regular basis. You know the market clearly for ECM enterprise content management and IDP and the things we sell primarily around workflow automation. So always best to have uh, someone like yourself on the show uh, so that we can talk really specifics about what you see in the industry um, trends and kind of, uh, you know, where you see kind of this, our technology, which is typically in the BTA channel um, from a, from a channel perspective, but also, you know, as it relates to commercial customers could be, literally anything manufacturing distribution healthcare banking you know etc so uh wanted just to kind of get uh, some of your outlooks sort of speak on the industry and kind of what excites you about 2024 obviously ai big big right now machine learning um where do you see our industry going that's a great question um and in 2024 probably some of the most exciting options are uh, the option of cutting edge technologies. Uh, as you mentioned, AI is definitely one of those. Uh, people that are moving to cloud-based systems rather than just on-premises systems. Uh, the merging of trends of all of those, just trying to uh, increase uh, efficiency on all of those, including things like robotic process automation. So combining all of those technologies to, together to make a, a single solution, uh, if you compare that to what we've had in the past, uh, it's drastically different. So it's a, a very exciting time. Uh, and what do you see? What do you see like uh, sales-wise, revenue-wise? What are some of those, What are what's really getting customers to buy Epicor ECM? Epicor technology right now. What what's like the the silver bullet, the use case, the technology that's really getting excited? The thing that we've seen the most uh, has been in AP automation, being able to capture invoice information, uh, comparing that to ERP systems, being able to route it through various workflows based on the data that's presented to them, so it can go for multiple approvals. And then finally, updating all of that information into the ERP. So again, uh, eliminating 60 to 80% of the manual data entry that people are doing today. So getting rid of those mundane tasks. Uh, so things that people yeah, just AP's do. Yeah, AP's always been there, right? And and I exactly. think, you know, but I, I also think to your point, the ERP, right? So you're seeing a huge consolidation, right? The Dynamics products, everybody's moving to BC and their finance products within Dynamics 365. Um, so are you seeing more of that? I mean, AP's always been around, right? Um, it has. Right? Yeah, so it's kind I of know interesting you've... with, with the, the whole GP market because they did announce that they were going to end uh, provide a, an end of life for the Great Plains product. Uh, they have turned around and changed that again. Uh, so uh, while it does have an end of life, they've actually extended that out. So it'll probably be seven years before the Great Plains oh, product wow. is pro really deprecated. So we still have a lot of a lot of customers doing that. I think there's over, geez, like 30,000 customers still running Great Plains. Great Plains. Uh, so when you think about the, the process of trying to convince that many customers with, because they all have customizations within the GP product, trying to move that to a different ERP system, even if it's a different Microsoft product, uh, is just going to be a very daunting task. Well, it's going to take years and years and years for that to, to fully uh, finish its process. Yeah, and I guess, you know, tail end on that is, is you know, clearly there's challenges in our industry. Um, you talk about AP, clearly that's one of the big use cases, along with, you know, claims and onboarding. But, you know, 
what's the biggest challenge and i'm, I'm kind of baiting you here so it's a new <laughs> you you know the new release uh 24 or actually 23 version 23 of docs are up core ecm there's this automation studio piece right um there is and integration's always been a challenge for everybody um what what does this new automation studio provide and and, and what challenges does it overcome well, the biggest challenge that we've had with integrating with third-party applications is the actual connectivity into the database itself, figuring out what format the data needs to be in. Because uh, inside of Docstar, we can gather information, we can we can do database lookups, we can extract all of that data, but taking all of that data in the correct format and updating it into the ERP so that uh, it's uh, an actual transaction has always been a little bit problematic. So Automation Studio uh, has a number of different pre-built connectors. So if you uh, look at all of the different ERP systems that we try to connect into, it has a lot of those connectors built into it. So rather than going to each individual ERP and saying, okay, well, what APIs do you have? Right. What Which is impossible need to, be in? to maintain, yeah, it, right? It takes you hundreds, if not thousands of hours to figure all of that out. So... With automation well, so studio. what is the automation studio? Are you able to share that or? Yeah, it's based of, on it's the iPaaS pl platform, right? It is based on the Workado platform. Uh, yep. So it's a connectivity platform that uh, already has APIs built in. So all we really have to do is build to the automation studio specifications, and then it'll take everything from there and transmit the, the data Which is the smart, performance. right? Absolutely. I mean, you're trying to keep up with every version of every application. And, and the reality is, is a lot of what you and I used to do was on on-premise ERP systems. And that was a much Absolutely. different uh, conversation because we would push flat files back and forth for pushing data, right? Pulling data was yep. usually always ODBC or some means there from a report to an FTP site. But uh, but pushing data was always the difficult part and still yeah, is. So, um, and now that most things are web based, um, you know, cloud based, you know, that local capability to drop a file to an SMB share just isn't there anymore. So I, th I think that's the biggest. I mean, I don't know if there's anything else you can share in terms of like challenges, current challenges and what Docstar will allow you to do. I know primarily the automation studio is the big step forward here. Um, I do know there were some UI changes, although that doesn't really solve any challenge, I would say, but I mean, maybe for some of the docs or users. So what what is really Epicor's, um, you know, thought leadership? What are, what are you guys coming out with that's just going to, you know, say, hey, I got to have Docstar? Well, a combination of the automation studio giving us uh, a greater ability to be able to integrate into pretty much any application. Um, and some things that we're looking at in the background is starting to use AI technology. Uh, it's nothing that's been released yet. Uh, it's still in the testing phases. So we've uh, started looking at how to use AI technology to automate a lot of the processes that you're doing today. Uh, for example, especially since we're talking a lot about AP automation, uh, if you're GL coding an invoice and an invoice comes in and you do that normal GL coding, today we're taking that invoice, passing that out. And if we're trying to capture what you've added, we're taking that data, writing it out to a table. So the next time that we process something, we can do a lookup in that table. So it's a very complicated process. So using AI technology, we can take a look at the invoice that you just process and say, okay, well, you've just entered this. The next time that you process one, we can say, okay, well, this is what you entered last time. Is that what you want to use again? And if not, we can look back two, three, four times and say, okay, well, you've changed it up. Which one of these would you like to use? So AI so technology more predictive, is really going to... AI predictive. Exactly. You know, interesting. So you see that as part of the capture and the searching ECM component, the content management component? I'm, I'm not sure if it'll actually fit into the searching part, because usually when somebody comes in to search, they have an idea as to what they're searching for. But when you're processing a document, all of the information that you have to use over and over and over again, uh, it could really fit into that. And AI, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a huge buzzword right now. And you have to be really cautious with AI because AI can be either local, so it's only using your data, 
or you can actually submit it out to some of the large vendors that are out there and use some of their technologies. Uh, when you're doing something like that, you're taking your data and you're putting it out onto the web. So you're uh, risking that being used by somebody else. And in a lot of cases, even with AP automation, it's not that big of a deal. But every now and then you have some sensitive information that shouldn't be. So I think technology providers today really have to look at how can we use AI, AI be able to restrict that just to your own local data so that you're not putting that kind of data out at risk. Yeah, AI is really an overused term at this point. I mean, so you, to your it point, is. right? I mean, chat GPT is going to look at the internet. It's not going to look at your local data sources exactly. versus like a Epicor, I'm sure Epicor ERP, um, because you're owned by Epicor as an entity and they have a big development team and they have a large ERP practice. They're probably adding AI within the ERP. And then naturally you guys, I believe because you're on the Epicor Kinetic Framework, would be able to take advantage of some of those different types of developments. Um, so you have the benefit of being Epicor from that perspective. Interesting. Yep. So, you know, the, the question, and I've, you know, spent a lot of time recently on thought leadership and, you know, looking at ISVs like, like yourself, right? Docstar, um, about, I don't know whether it's six years ago, you were purchased by Epicor, right? But you were an Almost independent eight. ISV. Oh, I yep. want to say interesting. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately you have a lot of these ISVs like yourself, right? And and a lot of that document management that you're so successful with, you know, back in the 90s selling document management, I mean, a lot of that functionality is built into the ERPs now. Mm -hmm. um, you see that with Dynamics BC, you know, you just, you just don't need ECM anymore. And you see that also with the cloud storage companies. And you also see it with the IDP providers like Anchor, which you guys uh, white label as Epicor, IDC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those independent IDP vendors, they're kind of getting cannibalized. One, the RPA vendors are adding all that IDP functionality to content management, you got SharePoint, it comes free with your Microsoft subscription. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what do you see the future of like as companies like yourself offering document management and intelligent document processing and competing with the likes of Google and, you know, the hypervisors, Azure, Microsoft? What, what do you see as, um, as, as your roadmap for that and combating? Yeah, so the the large IS or the large manufacturers uh, provide all of the toolkits, like SharePoint. Um, some of them have some intelligent data capture processes, but what they don't do very well is piece them all together to be able to make a simple application. Uh, so in order to use the entire Microsoft stack, you have to get a, a somebody to come in to customize all of those applications, being able to figure out which components are needed, how to get them all to interact together, being able to build that all together. Whereas when you get into the document management providers, they've already done all of that legwork. Uh, and while it doesn't seem like that's a real big deal, uh, in a couple of years, let's say Microsoft decides to deprecate one of their toolkits. If you had one of those custom solutions, you're now going back to the drawing board, trying to find another one that'll fit in and be able to reintegrate that back into your system. So then that could take sometimes just a couple of hours, depending on what it was actually doing, or it can take hundreds or thousands of hours, depending on how complex of an application that was. So all of the... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that, but the reality is SharePoint's not a toolkit. It's a commercial product that's free. Right. It's it serverless. There's no server. I don't yeah. have to move my data into your cloud, right? Into Docstar, some, you know, 10, $15 million company. Obviously, you're owned by Epicor, but that component, right? Small ISV in a larger organization. Now you own my data. I have security concerns. I have retention concerns. I also have adoption issues, right? If I'm a Microsoft shop and there's 345 million. Microsoft users, right? And mm -hmm. I want to operate in Teams. I want to be in Teams. I don't want to go open a browser, log in with something else, and then have to search. I could easily use SharePoint for that. And it's okay. something I already own. So I, you know, and it's not just you guys, but like OpenText, Abby, Cofax, yep. you know, and, it, and I agree. Microsoft is from a tool, it, it has the components 
But to string them all together into a solution, yeah, you would have to have a bit of professional services. Agreed. Yep. Um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, I guess the question to you is, is are you selling, because back in the day, we would sell hun- uh, hundreds of Dockstar systems a year. Mm-hmm. We sell maybe six now. Um, yep. And we call them 101s, document file cabinets, right? So has your business really transformed, I think, more from a document management to a workflow automation, right? Because you talk a lot about AP. So is that how, you know, you focus on a single point solution like AP and that gets you in the door to then do more? It does. Yeah, the the old systems that we used to sell just we would consider them as a scan file or retrieve uh, solution, just getting rid of that paperwork. With all of the advances on workflows, things like that, uh, it's really turned into a content management system rather than just a document management system. So any kind of documents can come in, you could actually use the workflows to be able to route those through. Uh, We use AP a lot for, as you mentioned, just getting into the door. Once you have that solution in place, they start uh, looking around at the organization to figure out where else it can be used. So. Uh, obviously, human resources is a, a big paperwork area, uh, so they can actually start bringing things like that in. And then with the security classifications and things like that, we can actually restrict who has access to what, to what level they have that access. Uh, so it makes it really easy to kind of expand out throughout the organization. Are you seeing some verticals or use cases that are that you're in more than others? Uh, and you mentioned compliance and security. I mean, that's a you know, if you're a gas station versus, you know, a financial services company that needs, you know, FINRA compliance and all that, that's a much different play, right? I mean, the oh, latter is more, more applicable to what you provide, right? So where Absolutely. are you seeing, you know, adoption of your product? We really see it all across the board. Um, a little bit of everybody can really use that product. So, uh, contract management. And when I say contract management, it doesn't really compete with contract management softwares because they usually sure. uh, capture the, the contract data and then you can take pieces of it and combine those together to make new contracts, things like that. But if you're storing contracts and trying to track when they're expiring, uh, that's a, a great solution for us because we can bring those contracts into the system. You can search on all of the data within the contracts. Uh, we can have expiration dates so you can actually track when they're going to expire. You can even get notifications when they're within a, a, a certain time period of expiring so that you can actually go through and start working on those again. Uh, so yeah, I always really... saw, yeah, it's interesting that you say contracts. <clears throat> and. You know, obviously, there's lots of industries, horizontal solution versus vertical solution, right. which I always think you're focused on. I mean, y- you know, I think, w- you know, back when we all started in this industry, you know, document management, the ability to search and retrieve documents and be able to do things on them was like groundbreaking. Clearly not <laughs> anymore. And a lot of Definitely that's actually not. built built into ERP system. And, and to your point, like DocuSign. They have a whole contracts management, right, with the digital yep. signatures. Clearly, you guys have that DocuSign integration, and it's great. Um, so that those gaps where ECM used to be able to fit, I don't know that they're all there anymore, right? So you have to be very selective of where you pitch your product. We do, and some of those gaps are closing. Um, but one of the things that we have found, even though that a lot of the ERPs are offering document management, it's really kind of a, an, a, a single attach type of solution where you scan that in, you bring it out to your desktop, you go into the software, you click on about 12 different things and you can attach it. And then it is attached to the ERP system, which works out pretty well, depending on your volume. If it's a fairly low volume, it works great. If it's a high volume, it gets a little bit cumbersome. The big problem that we see is when you do something like that, Uh, And if we go back to accounts payable, let's say I'm looking for all of the invoices for ABC plumbing. If I attach it to the ERP system, I can go into that vendor and I have to look at each individual attachment rather than going into some kind of a document management solution, look for ABC plumbing and have a list of all of the documents that I can actually browse through very quickly. So even though they do offer some kind of an attaching option, uh, it's not necessarily the best option for uh, Higher volumes. Yeah, I would that's, say great that's for fair, volumes. right? To your point, like having all your documents in one area, not siloed, right? And we always talk about, yeah. you know, putting your HR documents over here and this and that. Um, but, you know, you're also seeing a lot of the cloud storage like Google Drive and OneDrive yep. and 
Dropbox, whatever, all integrated with a lot of these things too, which provide a lot of that functionality, you know, at a fraction of the cost, so, you know, everything's, you know, um, and again, you guys are SOC too, and, you know, again, you know, very secure from that perspective. So, so from, you know, long term in terms of where do you see the industry going? Obviously, AI is big. Um, but what I what I overall hear you saying is really nothing changed too much from a doc star positioning and go to market strategy, which are really, you know, AP. Um, that's the biggest workflow problem you see. Um, and then you kind of fill gaps where there is one, right? HR, you know, back file scanning of HR, terminated yep. employee record, contracts, right? Somebody needs a con. We actually just implemented a doc star at the New Hampshire Legal Association or something of that effect. They had SharePoint, but felt that they, you know, the doc star solution was a better fit from a workflow perspective um, because one, it has an image viewer control, right? It has the ability to execute mm -hmm. workflows. Um, and, uh, you know, the ability to integrate with Outlook. So it was, it, it worked for them, but, um, you know, what, what are you seeing like for the next five years? Like, do you think there'll be an ECM industry still? I think there will be. Um, and, and I think it'll be a, a very robust industry, uh, but I think it's going to transition from, uh, kind of like what we did 10 years ago. We used to scan paper, file it away. And, uh, that was all a pretty much dead. Right. Uh, now we're into a, a much more advanced system where we're bringing all kinds of documents in, writing them through workflows. And I think it's going to even expand from there, but it's going to be much more integrated with not necessarily just your ERPs, but CRM applications, any of your line of business applications where we can actually share data between uh, the content management system and whatever applications you have out there. Uh, and most likely, I think in the five-year time frame, we could probably have workflows that don't necessarily start within the application itself, the document management application, but might start in your CM application where you get a document that comes in using Automation Studio. It can trigger something that happens inside of Docstar to trigger out a, a workflow that brings that document to any number of different people in the organizations. So I think it'll still be there. It'll be much more advanced than what we are today. So you were talking about uh, before you used to sell hundreds of Docstar systems and now you're down to six. Uh, and it's probably gonna be something similar to that. You're gonna sell fewer Docstar systems, but they're gonna be much more advanced systems, more integrated. Uh, so again, that cost actually just goes up. So you're probably gonna have about the same revenue volume from uh, those six or 10 systems. Yeah, we're seeing today. a transition, right? You know, you're we call them Docstar 101s, the typical scan index retrieve type stuff. Um, that has kind of gone away. That's been cannibalized by, yep. you know, so we, we sell integrated workflow automation. And to your point, they're larger deals yep. uh, with a lot of professional services. And, you know, we, we provide a turnkey solution, right? To your point, you know, kind of comes out of the box. Whereas SharePoint, you have to build out some of that. But I also think, you know, we're constantly in a single point solution. We get into AP, you know, you get a proponent or two, they leave the organization. Um, retention, adoption of, uh, you know, the docs, our solution, integrated solution becomes a problem, right? Because the reality is everybody has Microsoft. They're either running Microsoft or Google, the G Suite for yep. their modern work. And they're being exposed to, you know, you're in Teams all day and you want that to be your interface for notifications, for, you know, having worked for two Microsoft tech-based companies that were somewhat on the larger side, you know, there is no phone number to call you. It's all through Teams, right? And right. and that's the interface. So we've seen issues with adoption specifically around, um, you, you know, having Docsar be a separate browser interface, um, having to create automation studio integrations, um, you know, and those types of things. Um, and and again, if we find someone, we, we have some good customers that know what they want. Um, they're very focused on it. There's not a lot of turnover in that particular company and we are really in good shape there, but we see you know, this kind of certainly in AP, AP clerks, they come and go very quickly. Um, very true. And and we find adoption issues where we're constantly having to retrain people. Um, what are some of the struggles that you're seeing kind of in, in that vein? 
Well, pretty much the same thing that you're seeing. Um, I mean, you, as you mentioned, you put in a system, uh, a year goes by, three of the five people that you initially trained are now gone. Uh, so now you have to go back and retrain. Uh, but sometimes that actually brings up a pretty good point. So when you get these new people in, they have new ideas. They think, well, gee, it shouldn't work this way. So it gives you the ability to go back and look at their workflows, modify those to make them a little bit more efficient than what you started off with. Uh, especially when most organizations come in and they want they want the Lamborghini, but they can afford the Chevy Chevette. Right, right. So you start off with something very basic. And then after a year or so, you can go back and say, okay, well, now you started off here, but we can also add this to make you more efficient. And doing that phased approach makes it a lot more feasible for customers to be able to, to get into a solution that gets pretty expensive. Do you know at what percentage like of your revenue is to the base versus net new i mean are you are you selling a lot into the base with that kind of concept like um you know let's expand it land and expand versus net new acquisition is it 50 50 is i mean not asking for like specifics but it's probably more 70 percent net new and 30 percent going back to our base Interesting. it's something that we really haven't focused on a whole lot uh but we're just starting to get back into that again now uh, and I think that'll that'll get more closer to 50-50. Yeah, so, I mean, here's a good example, right? Ancora, which you guys rebrand as Epicor IDC. Um, they came out with 9.3, which um, changes the OCR engine from Tesseract to Azure. Yep. Um, you know, we have like 20-something plus installations of Ancora. And, you know, it's like one of those things you implemented three years ago. You assume everything's kind of working and why go back and... Then you do an account review and they're like, hey, this isn't working and that's not working. And you're yep. like, OK. And then you're like, maybe I should just go back every three years and tech refresh everyone um, yeah. and put that into your support agreement or something. Right. I mean, the technology is moving so fast right now that, you know, things you implemented three or even seven years ago, like seven years ago. Like I look back at what we used to do. Remember, I mean, you obviously remember Docstar 3X when oh, everything, <laughs> but you would do all of the indexing, you know, like for insurance companies, policy number, claim number, and then it would throw everything into one keyword field. And yep. then you have now, and now you remember, we moved everybody over to this new Docstar Eclipse, which is the old version, the old name. Um, and you're seeing a lot of this legacy data and how, how, screwed up it is because it's all embedded in one field um, yep. so clearly obviously you know docs or 3x developed in what late 80s or early 90s um, it was yeah the early 80s to to the mid 90s it was right for a while. so it was around for a while and it was a very stable system but just how the metadata taxonomy was was just archaic right it um, was. and now and now with we call them custom metadata fields and even though I, it's custom it's really you know you need to have individual fields vendor name invoice yeah. number and not just like throw everything into a single field and then hope for the True. best because back then it was all about searching it wasn't really about workflow because 3x didn't really have it so it's just the workflow or integration period. good point right the integration component right so yep. docs are back then was very myoptic on searching. And then you saw very quickly how, you know, geez, this, this platform just isn't going to work and scale for workflow with this True. keyword title process. So um, are you seeing like, I mean, clearly been 21 years at an organization, which is incredible to begin with. I don't know that I could be anywhere for 20 plus years, but <laughs> um, do, do you feel like, you know, Epicor from a product development in product management perspective sees the future and is, you know, aligning with the future? I think we're starting to. We're uh, being a large corporation. Uh, most of those move very slowly. It's like turning around a, a battleship instead of a tugboat. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it, it's taking a little bit, but we... We have the, I mean, we're looking into AI technology, so we're definitely looking in the right directions. We're looking at increasing the integrations. And I think once we get all of those integrations and the AI tied together, I think you're going to see some big changes. Yeah, I'd also like to see your IDC. I know, again, you white label that, but it should be embedded in the interface. It's tough when it's a separate interface. It is. Um, yeah, and that's a, a 
common problem that we've heard from a number of different customers. They have to go from this screen to this screen to this screen to be able to do everything. And we've, we're actually looking at using the uh, Ancora APIs to be able to embed a lot of that right into our screen. So eliminating some of that. Yeah, we just not, put a tab really... with an iframe. I mean, just put another right. tab called Capture IDC or something and just yep. have her load the web page into there. I thought that would be an easy enough thing, right? Yep. Um, and, you know, I guess the... For you know what I see and which is difficult and you know we never when we're selling docs are we never sell to the IT folks right that's that's the harder one right so we always oh absolutely you know AP we sell to CFO and the use case to the business owner right but yep. um, you know what I'm seeing now is with security we're getting 200 page questionnaires from all of our customers on you know. Uh, IT policies and security and with ransomware and all this kind of crazy stuff that's happening, you know, security and compliance is really a, a problem. Um, how do you handle that? I mean, you know, when we're talking about the Microsoft tech stack and what we're doing there, it's it. I, I want to go to IT because they're like, listen, we already have it. We own it and it's serverless and I don't have to do anything versus and I know most of your business is now SaaS, I assume, versus on-premise. But to have that conversation, hey, Mr. IT, I need to get a server. I need to have these permissions. I need you know, to whitelist these IPs. Like, it's a pain to get on-premise systems in now. So oh, it is. You, so are you mostly SaaS and you don't even offer on-prem? Or like, how are you handling that? Well, we still offer an on-prem option, uh, but we have noticed over the past three years or so, three years ago, it was probably 70, 40 or 70, <laughs> 70, 30 on-prem to SaaS. Today, it's the exact opposite. About 70% mm -hmm. is SaaS. Uh, and we're starting to see that trend even go further towards SaaS. Now, when you're talking to a customer, if they come up and say, we want on-prem, it's almost surprising. Like, oh, you really? Uh, it's just a, a whole different ball game. Everybody wants to go right. SaaS just because they don't want to uh, have to worry about the, the ransomwares or the things like that. I would say probably in the past year, we've probably had five or six different customers that come up and say, hey, I was hit by That's ransomware. Insane. We have to fix this. And then now it's a, a big rush to try to convert everything back over, look at their backups or pay somebody to decrypt the entire system it's just very difficult to do yeah we saw that same a week almost we were getting two a week at one point and what would yep. happen is the ransomware would get into our cloudberry backup which backs up docs started the cloud and mm -hmm. the ransomware would would stop the service so oh. it was smart enough to know and stop the backup service so you're seeing like the security compliance aspects of organizations really driving the technology now. And, yep. you know, this concept of, oh, I don't trust the cloud. In fact, it's probably safer because there's so many endpoints in an organization um, to to get into those servers and those SMB directories. You know, it's well, a real yeah. problem. Yeah, you look at the the main SaaS providers. I mean, you look at Amazon Web Services, you look at Azure. And the amount of personnel that they can actually put on security to be able to make sure that those systems aren't compromised, uh, you just can't do that on a on an individual on network. organization. Yeah, it's just impossible. Interesting. Yeah. So you know, Jim, uh, it's been about uh, forty minutes. Uh, appreciate the time today. Um, you know, again, I you know I evaluate as VP of technology here at PIF, a number of different ECM, IDP, RPA, web forms, products, um, you know, as it relates to ECM, I still think Docstar has a ton of functionality. The price point's right. Um, certainly every product has issues and could be improved, but, um, you know, anybody listening to this, Docstar is a great product. Again, we've looked at so many different things, but again, you know, it's not for everyone. Um, you have to have I the agree. right use case, right? And there's a lot yep. of, a, a, you know, new things coming out. You know, the whole IDP thing is really, you know, at the point where you can do all this kind of stuff with the hypervisors at a fraction of the cost of some of these other independent ISVs. So, you know, but, uh, you know, the nice thing about the, the docs or Epicor environment is, is you kind of have, you have the forms, you have the ECM, you have the IDP piece. Um, you know, and then us as an integrator, flush wrap, all of that. So I, I do, I like your product. 
hopefully you guys will look to the future and add some of these things as not a late adopter, but an early adopter. And um, I think that would help you in, you know, in the industry, because a lot of these other companies have already kind of made those headways. Yep. Um, but you also have the advantage of kind of there's a lot of legacy out there. You know, the Documentums AX, you know, they've been bought 15 times by so many different people. <laughs> right. Um, there's true. not a lot of new players. Nobody's there's not a lot of new ECM players or certain a lot of IDP new idp players right yes awesome so hyper sciences but nobody's coming out and saying oh i got a new ecm no you still have all the same guys you have you know the ec um uh, emc which is now the open text you know platforms yep. and the highland platform but yeah i think i think you're better positioned than a highland i just think highland's overpriced you know on base uh yeah, overly we've... priced ecm yeah, what we've made that same from? evaluation. Yeah. The the functionality is similar. Uh, so when you look at the two, Docsar just seems like a better option. But yeah, I mean that's coming from me. So <laughs> yeah, no, I I you I'd know be again, slightly biased in this industry. Like, yeah, of course. I mean we sell against <laughs> that, right? I mean, but there's really no reason to get a a uh, Porsche if you if you're you know driving 20 miles an hour every day. So True. you might as well get something of more aligned practicality wise. So. Absolutely. Well, hey, listen, I always love talking to somebody that's in the industry. Um, great talking to you, Jim. Obviously, I've known for you for quite some time. And, you know, uh, you know, I appreciate the, the candor and the openness. And, um, yeah, any parting words? Well, thank you for having me in. This was a, a great session. And if we could do something else again, I'd happy to join in. Wonderful. Thanks, Jim. And take care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.